there was an interesting article. I, I know so many articles have been written, and the debate has been kind of a perennial one for evangelicals. Do you tell your kids the truth about Santa? What do you do? When do you do that? How do you do it? This is a pretty thoughtful argument from bringing truth dot com bringing truth dot com giving some compelling reasons what is the message of santa claus what's the idea behind him if you're nice he gives you stuff if you're naughty you get a piece of coal in your stocking is that christianity is that even close to what christ came to accomplish for us be good and i'll bless you be good and you'll go to heaven no it's the opposite. You deserve a lump of coal. I'm giving you the diamond of heaven, my son, to forgive you of your sins. The, the message of Santa Claus, it is 180. It's not sort of compatible, you know, the, the presents, where do they come from? It, it's just the opposite message of Christmas. And maybe I'm just getting curmudgeonly and I'm okay with that. <laughs> I, I'd like somebody to make the declaration. When you hit this age, you can just say what you're thinking. I'd, I'd really like for somebody to make that. Can we get an executive order on that one? You, you hit this age and just go ahead and say it. You don't like the food that just got served to you at somebody's house? You get to tell them. <laughs> you walk into somebody's home and it's a mess. You just get to, does anybody ever clean around here? You know, that stamp of approval from the government. I'm not suggesting it would be godly. I'm just saying it would be kind of nice to be able to sometimes <laughs> speak those things. <laughs> Santa Claus is just the opposite of, of, of Christianity. By the way, I thought you might be intrigued by this. Some of the reasons, and I thought these were just, they, they, these went a little bit deeper, a little bit more thoughtful than some of the perennial arguments about Santa Claus. Number the one, the first one was the scenario was, um, you sure that you want to lie to your kids? Are you building trust with them? And they gave, a, they gave a scenario, which I don't think is crazy. A third grade classroom, imagine this. The teacher at the desk helping a child. The rest of the class talking with one another. Seven-year-old Claire asks her friends what they're hoping Santa will bring them for Christmas. They laugh and say, there's no such thing as Santa. Do you still believe in Santa Claus? What do you mean? Of course Santa's real. He visits my house every Christmas. Claire goes on to talk about the tags on her presents that read, From Santa. She says her mom and dad put cookies and milk out the night before Christmas, and in the morning they're gone. Claire goes on to defend the existence of Santa on the basis that her mother wouldn't lie to her. More laughter. Claire comes to the realization in front of the whole class she has been duped. She is hurt and embarrassed and can't wait to get home to talk with her mom and dad. That scenario is not far-fetched. It could be undermining your trust with your child, which is a big deal with kids. You want them to trust you. Number two, I thought this was, again, just a different take on the whole Santa debate that was more thoughtful. You want your kids to be critical thinkers. You don't want to, look, the, the whole idea of Santa Claus is just preposterous and far-fetched. The jolly old man is going to come down a chimney? He can't fit there. Wait a second. We don't even have a chimney. How can he eat cookies and milk in everybody's house? That's ridiculous. How does he get into our home? He's watching me while I sleep. What kind of a creeper is this Santa Claus anyway? And a kid who is told straight away, no, honey, there's, it's, 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 it's what our world does. That's, that's how the pagans celebrate this winter event. We, we do things differently. Santa does not encourage credulity. You don't want your kids to be gullible. You want them to be critical thinkers. Reason three, you want to empower your kids. And I, when I first read the headline, it, what, what, empower my kids to what? He writes, the author of this article from Bringing Truth, when I told my son the truth about Santa, it created a special bond between us. He knew something the other kids didn't know. He had a dad who thought enough of him to tell him the truth. When he heard other kids talking about Santa, he knew that he had special knowledge that his dad shared with him. By the way, that's, that's adult business. When you share with a child something that, they, that they, they aren't really prepared to know, that's treating them like an adult. I mean, 
there's certain things you don't want to share with them that are just for adults, of course. But in this instance, you let them in. Some may interpret this as not letting my child enjoy the wonder of Santa, detracting from Christmas. I'd rather have a tight, trusting relationship with my son over any perceived happiness that Santa might bring. Reason number four. You want your kids to know that you brought the presents because you love them. Instead of telling your kids, Santa gave this to you because you performed well, and frankly, they didn't because none of us do. We love you, and we bought you gifts anyway. You know, when you think about your behavior, you shouldn't be getting any of these things this year. But your parents love you, and we gave them to you anyway. You know, that reminds me of the gospel. And isn't that what Christmas is supposed to be about? You want your kids to understand the gospel. And that would be one way to do it. This, this, the author of this, I probably should have his name, shouldn't I? The author of this article from bringingtruth.com. Sorry, sir. Yeah. He's, he's, how many people maybe believe the work to get to heaven routine because of Santa Claus? I know you can't make a direct correlation to that. I, I get it. But that is the message of our world, isn't it? Do good and you get there. You could do, do enough right things and you'll be rewarded. That's not Christianity. You're bad, you're bad, you're really, really bad. But God is good and God is loving. And he died to save many that's what Matthew, I want to say 24, that he died for the many. Reason number six, you want the focus of Christmas to be on Jesus rather than a jolly old St. Nicholas. You want your kids to be cheerful givers, not greedy materialists. Would Santa have the same popularity if he didn't come bearing gifts? No. Why do kids love Santa Claus? Even though I always found him creepy. Always. That was one... It's things like this that remind you why you got married to somebody. We were mall walking. That's right. We were mall walking. And there, there was a Santa Claus and the kids are lined up and half of them are crying. And Mrs. Friel said, that was me. I, I was terrified of Santa. I, I, I thought it was creepy. Ditto. Who doesn't love stuff? Behave and you get more things. It promotes materialism. You want your kids to behave for the right reasons, not so they can get stuff. If you don't quit crying, Santa won't bring you anything. Go to bed and get to sleep. Santa won't come tonight. That's not Christian either. We do good because Jesus is good and he's done everything for us. That's our motivation, not to get presents, not to get goodies. We want to be pleasing to the God who has done everything for us. That is the motivation of our Christian behavior, and that should be the motivation of our children's behavior. Not even to win affirmation from you, Mom and Dad, primarily to do things as unto the Lord. Maybe, just maybe, some food for thought from your loving Christmas curmudgeon. And until tomorrow, go serve your king.